So starting off with chapter three, we are going into integers and looking back at what we've done so far. We've looked at how to break numbers into their prime factors. We've looked at how to find common multiples, how to find the greatest common factor, looked how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, fractions and decimals and mixed numbers. And now we're moving into integers. So for this first section, we're gonna be just kind of getting to the foundation of what it actually is. So an integer is the collection of numbers consisting of counting numbers, their opposites, and zero. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what opposites mean. And there's gonna be no fractional or decimal parts. So even though there are fractions and decimals all along this number line in between, our whole numbers, we don't consider it to be an integer because an integer again has to be a counting number. So as you know we have our positives okay, and those are going to be numbers greater than zero. And So I like to put a little field goal over here. So the positives would always want to go to the right. So let's look at some of the key words that we have for positive numbers. So you're definitely going to want to write these down. So when I talk about increase, if I gain money into my account, deposit money means to put money into your account, like bank account, a growth, the tree grew five feet over the summer, above, above sea level, ascend, so the plane ascends into the sky, and improve. These would all represent things that we would consider positives. So here are a couple of examples. 12 degrees above zero, depositing $50, and gaining 30 yards, especially in fo football. So negative integers are less than zero. And some of the keywords that we have are decrease, loss, withdraw. Withdraw means to take money out of a bank account, a decline below, so like 30 yards below sea level, descend, the plane would descend, make a descend for landing, and down. So those would all be things that would represent a negative number. So if I said eight degrees below zero, that would be represented. So we're taking the words into math symbols that would be represented as a negative eight. If I was withdrawing $50, that would be a minus 50 or a negative 50. Losing 15 yards would be minus 15 or a negative 15. So we have our positive and negative numbers and just like, let me go back to this last slide, just like the positive goal over here, our negative goal would be over here. So again, the negatives always want to go towards their goal. So the negatives always want to go to the left and the positives would always want to go to the right. So just keep that in mind. So we talk about opposite numbers, and that is when, just like if you had twins, they're the same but opposite. So it's two numbers that are the same distance, same distance from zero, but on opposite sides of zero on the number line, or from different sides on the number line. So here's some example. If I had a number line, So, and I just like to put zero there in the middle. So again, the negatives would be over here and our positives over here. So if I had positive four over here, negative four would be over here. The opposite of seven would be negative seven. So notice this, the same distance 
from zero, just on opposite directions. In addition to talking about opposites, we also talk about this thing called absolute value. And a lot of my seventh graders are still struggling with this. But this is the distance of a number from zero on the number line. So the opposite is you're, you have the same distance, but they're on different sides. Our absolute value talks about how far away is it from zero. So I always like to think about it being a happy box because distance is always positive. I would never say, oh, I'm going to go negative five miles to the beach. You just don't say it. Distance is always positive. So this symbol right here, that is our math symbol for the absolute value. So the way I would read this math sim symbol, it's not just a line and then a hyphen, like negative four, and then another line. This would read as absolute value of negative four is four. Again, notice it's positive, and then the absolute value of 4 is 4. So again, notice that they have the same distance. Okay. So if I was walking here, I would have to go 4 to the left. And if I was walking here, I would go four to the right. Okay, because remember, this is our negative goal, and this is our positive goal. Okay, but again, the absolute value is always going to be positive. So I do like, sometimes we'll call it the happy box, but I wanted to start referring to it as the railroad tracks, because that way you can remind yourself distance. A train doesn't go negative distance. And so you don't necessarily need to write these number um, lines down, but what I want to talk about is a key phrase that I use is, so write this down, left is less. Okay. So whatever number is on the left on the number line is automatically going to be less than. So if I have 3 and 1, Oh, the 1 is going to be less than 3, or 3 is greater than 1. So if you just remember the left is less, you'll do pretty good. So go ahead and write this example down. Again, pause the screen. You should be pausing it as you're going along. And I want you to order them from least to greatest. And you can use the number line to help you out. If I'm looking at, and you don't have to put this field goal here, it'll help us when we add and subtract. But if I'm looking at the numbers, I'm spread out between like 30 and 25. So I'm going to go ahead and do increments of 5. Let's put this error right here. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And again, it's not perfect, but that's okay. And I'll just put negative 15. That was, so that would be negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25. I'm just kind of spacing it out a little bit. 25. And I could put the 10 in there as well if I wanted to. So using the number line, I can just plot these numbers here. So negative 20 would be right here. Positive 25 would be over here. Negative 5 would be right here. 
positive 20. Again, it's a positive, so it's going to be over here. Oops. Negative 10 is going to be right here. And negative 30. Okay. So this was 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Now that I've placed these on the number line, they're automatically in order from least to greatest because remember left is less. So negative 30, negative 20, negative 10, negative 5, 20, and 25. And I always like to count and make sure I have all my numbers. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've accounted for all of my numbers. So again, using a number line can help you to stay organized. So calm down. I want you to write these in your journal, and then I actually want you to solve them. And I will be doing a check on these in class. So we'll see you then.